Well, good morning, church. Pastor Brad here, Peace Lutheran Church, 240 West 9th Avenue in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It's good to be with you this morning. Thank you for spending part of your Sunday morning with us, uh, July the 12th, 2020, sixth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, thank you for thank you for being here. It's good. It is it is good to have you. Uh, as some folks get logged in, it's good to see some uh, some folks starting to log in. Good morning to those who are uh, those who are, are checking in. If you are so inclined, say good morning, and we'll uh, we'll uh, folks can know that you're here. That would be that'd be wonderful if you, if you're in, in inclined. Hi Donna, good morning to you. Uh, a couple of quick announcements to share with you this morning. A reminder that at nine o'clock we'll be having uh, worship in person here at Peace. If uh, anyone is inclined to do that, uh, if you if you feel it's safe for you and and or your family, uh, you are welcome to come and uh, spend some time with us this morning. And, and then at ten o'clock we'll be doing Zoom uh, coffee hour, so you're invited to that as well. A Zoom link was set up yesterday. We'll post it later on this morning here on Facebook. So if you would like to join us, we'd love to have you. Uh, that would be great. Um, good morning, Jan. Good morning, Diane and Kim. Nice to see you this morning. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, uh, one other announcement to share with you. This coming Wednesday, there will be service at 530. I can't promise you that it will be live but there will be a service of some kind. So if it's not live, if it's not me talking to you like this, it will be a, a video um, that you can watch and it'll be posted at 5.30. So either way, there will be worship this Wednesday at 5.30. However, there will not be um, uh, communion offered at 6.30 this Wednesday. So there will be worship at 5.30 Wednesday and, uh, and Sunday, next Sunday, the 19th, it will be uh, normal. It'll be 8 o'clock uh, Facebook Live. And uh, yeah, so... Just those are the quick announcements that I want to share with you. And uh, with that, let us take a moment as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and your word, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and service, servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Showering us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. You be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead as the day when you were baptized, you were reminded you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And if you don't want to make the cross on your forehead, you can make it across your body or however uh, that works and is comfortable for you. It reminds us again that we are that we belong to God, that God has claimed us, and God continues to always love us, no matter what. And so, for that, we are eternally grateful. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy. Live according to it and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, Joyce. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning to all those of you who are who are joining in. It is nice to have you uh, with us this morning. So thank you for spending part of your morning here with us. 
Our reading this day comes from the Gospel of Matthew. We begin with the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got, out in, he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And Jesus told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of God, hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word. And it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruits and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's easy with this text Uh, to simply jump right in and start explaining the parables that Jesus is using as he teaches. I mean, there's a lot here to unpack. We could talk about the symbolism of the seeds, the symbolism of the different types of ground that the seeds were, were sown on. We could start talking about how reckless the sower of the seeds was, simply seeming to toss seeds willy nilly without any rhyme or reason to why, where they were going. We could then dive deeper into you know how we are at points in our life that all four of the different kinds of soil we could do that and it would be lovely it would be simply lovely and i have no doubt that you would get a message out of that that, that you could take with you into the week and, and do what you need to do with it i could do that but i think before we can do that we need to listen to what Jesus is talking about at the very beginning of our text this morning. So I want you to hear those first three verses again. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that Jesus got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And Jesus told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. So we've got this image of Jesus who goes out by the sea. Maybe to be by himself, maybe he's checking out the fishing for the day. We don't know for sure, but it isn't long before a crowd starts to gather around Jesus. A crowd so large that Jesus needs to get into a boat to go out and into the water so that he can be seen and heard by more people. I want you to get that image in your mind. Jesus standing in a boat on the water and this crowd gathering in to hear what he has to say. Can Can you imagine the chattering and the jockeying for position so people could hear and see Jesus better? No doubt they knew the stories of Jesus and the things that he had been doing, how he had been healing the sick and and sharing meals with outcasts. There was those rumors that he was the final promised Messiah that everyone had been talking about, that this was the one. Could he definitely be the Son of God? Is this the one? Can you feel that anticipation 
and that expectation as Jesus begins to speak. So as they gather in, as they gather in around Jesus, he says, listen. And I think it's important. It's important for us to listen. Jesus wants to make sure that people are hearing what he has to say. It wasn't enough for them to be a part of the crowd. Jesus wants to emphasize the importance of listening. It's not simply enough to be present. Jesus wants them prepared to hear. How often do we simply listen without preparing to hear? It's often said we listen to respond rather than to understand. And Jesus this morning is is wanting those who are listening to listen to understand, knowing full well that not everyone was going to get it. So then Jesus begins to tell the story about a farmer who didn't seem to have a plan with the seeds that he had. He seems to randomly throw them everywhere in hopes that something might grow. There seems to be no there, there seems need, seems to be no rhythm to it. Any of you who are gardeners or farmers know that that's not how you approach it. You don't plant a, a, a cucumber seed next to a pumpkin seed, next to a corn seed, uh, you know, next to tomatoes. You don't do that. There's a rhyme and a reason. And yet these, this farmer, at least uh, the, the, the way Jesus tells the story, throws the seeds everywhere. And then the more important part, Jesus says, anyone with ears, listen. Do you hear that? Listen. There's that listen again. Jesus is adamant that we hear what he has to say, knowing full well that many, including the disciples, will not hear or understand exactly what is being said. And so he says it again in a little bit different way. But again, he says, hear what I'm going to say. Not all of the seeds that are planted are growing to produce a crop that is worth anything. They are going to fall in different kinds of soil. They are going to fall and something may or may not happen. Now, Jesus describes these four scenarios, and I think if we are being honest, our lives can fit into all four of those categories. There are times when we hear the gospel message and ignore it completely because we've checked that box on our list of things to do for the week. And there are times when we hear the gospel message and we try to follow it until our lives get difficult and and chaotic and we quickly resort to our own ways because we know how to cope in those manner. We have great intentions of following the gospel message, but the world is also clamoring for our attention. And so it's easy for us to get distracted Because the world seems to demand more than God does. At least we think we hear the world more than we hear God. And then we have those moments. Those moments when we recognize that we don't have to face our struggles alone. And God never wants us to. God never intended for us to face anything alone. And it's in those moments when we are reminded of how we can be transformed by God's grace. It's in those moments when we receive the return that's a hundredfold and sixtyfold and and thirtyfold. It's in those moments that give us that renewed hope. Now, I want to be honest. I often feel like I'm stuck in a combination of the rocky ground and the thorns. I desperately want to believe in what God is telling me, but I'm not always sure it's if it's enough, that I'm enough. I'm not sure that if even if I follow God's word to a T, that it's going to be enough. And it's easy to get stuck there. It's easy, my friends. It is It is beyond easy to get stuck there and think that nothing good is ever going to happen. It's easy to live our lives with a mentality of fear and defeat. It's easy to think that God doesn't care because of the setbacks that we experience. It's easy to show up for church and read our devotions and and then check the box and move on to the next thing. 
It's easy to hear, to respond. It's much, e- much more difficult often to hear, to understand. Especially in the turmoil we find ourselves in right now. It is very easy to give in to the chaos, to only read the headlines, rather than to find out the whole story. So here's the image I want to leave with you in the midst of all of this. Jesus throwing seeds at you. Jesus never giving up on you. Jesus throwing those seeds until you recognize that you are in fact good soil. That you are created with good soil that can bear the most excellent fruit. Yes, all of us. We are made from good soil. And Jesus is persistent. And Jesus is going to do whatever it takes for us to understand. That even though we feel like the rocky terrain or we're filled with thorns, or we let the words go in one ear and out the other, Jesus wants us to know that we are good soil. And so I want that image to be in your head. As you go about your day and you go about your week, I want you to think about Jesus never, ever giving up on you. Jesus standing just off to the side, handful of seeds ready. Ready to remind you and prove to you that you are good soil. Reminding you that Jesus believes in your potential. Jesus will continue to speak to you through those around you. The Holy Spirit will continue to nudge you and stir you to new and exciting things that you can't even imagine. Beloved, what God asks in return is that you listen. Open your heart, open your ears, open your mind, and listen. Listen to what God is saying to you. Listen to understand and not to respond. Listen. And I promise you, if you listen, you will see how you are making a difference in the world because you are good soil. And Jesus is there with the seeds ready to prove it. Let anyone with ears listen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we know, we know that you love us and we know that we are capable of amazing things. Help us to trust. Help us to trust in your promise. Help us to trust in your belief. Help us to trust that you never leave us, no matter what. Let our hearts be good soil, dear God. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, folks, once again. Steve, good morning. Kristen, good morning. Good morning to all those who are with us who have joined in. Uh, If you joined in partway through, it's okay, because we'll post this when it's all said and done, and then we'll... uh, and then you can go back and watch from the beginning if you if you so desire. Um, but it is it is wonderful to have you with us on on this day. Thank you for thank you for being here. Uh, a, a, a quick um, a quick plug. This is always the hardest part of uh, of any service for me because anybody who knows me knows this is not how I made up. But uh, a reminder that. Um, uh, or first a thank you that your offering and your tithes, your gifts are marvelous. We thank you for that. We cannot do the ministry here at Peace uh, without your without your generosity. And so for that, we are absolutely thankful. Uh, we've been able to, to keep doing the things that we're doing, uh, like Facebook Live and offering in-person services and our little free pantry and all the things that we do because of the generosity of people like you. And so we are, we are thankful for that. So if, 
if you're able and, and you uh, would like to support the Ministry of Peace and you don't already do so, uh, we can. In, I invite you to go to our website, uh, peaceoshkosh.com, uh, and uh, there's a link there. You can, if you would like to give uh, a donation, that would be great. Um, again, that's uh, you know that's the way we keep doing ministry, and uh, that's enough of that because, like I said, that's not that that's not where I'm comfortable, but I know it's also important. So, with that. Uh, let us move to a time of prayer. How we do this uh, is I'll begin with an opening prayer, and then I'll invite you into a space of some silence where you can uh, bring your prayers to God, either uh, verbally or uh, silently, or however you can drop comments in the in the section. I will lift those up, and the rest of the community can also know what we're praying for uh, this day. However you would like to do that and then i will uh, conclude uh, i will conclude the prayers so let let's pray gracious god today we are thankful we are thankful for this day a day that you have made we are thankful for the reminder that you see us as good soil that you see us as able to produce something that is pleasing to you. Help us to not forget that. And we know your love is for all people. And for that we are thankful. And so at this time we bring to you our prayers in both words that are spoken and unspoken. Gracious God, this day we ask for safety for those who are traveling, for those who are, uh, those who are out and about during uh, this time of year. We know that it's, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult time to be, uh, to be on the move, but, uh, but we know that it's also important for many. And so we ask, that you, we ask for your safety and guidance as, uh, as that happens. We pray for those who are um, struggling in any way. You know our hearts, you know our minds, you know the things that face us, the things that cause us to feel like we're the thorny bush or the rocky soil. And so we ask for uh, patience and, guide, and guidance in the midst of our doubt. We pray for those who are affected in any way by the ongoing uh, coronavirus and all that's happening with that, uh, it affects everyone differently, and and we we see areas that are spiking, and our prayers especially go to them uh, that for their safety, and the safety of the nurses and the the doctors and, and everyone who works in the medical field or who are deemed essential employees. We we are thankful uh, for their generosity and their willingness to to offer help. We pray for those who rest in our hearts, in our minds, those who are known only to you. We know that you hear our prayers in whatever form we bring them to you, and so we are thankful. We are thankful for that. We are thankful for this community, this community of believers that you have gathered together at this time, this community of believers that knows no boundaries, but rather it is only brought in by you. And so for that, we are thankful. We are thankful for uh, all that you have given us. We ask all of this, whatever else you see that we need, in your holy and precious name. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you uh, for being with us this morning. Thank you for spending part of your Sunday morning uh, with us here at Peace or uh, whatever, whenever you happen to be, whenever you happen to be watching us. Thank you for, uh, thank you for for that. Uh, it is truly is a blessing to share this ministry with you. So, uh, uh, with that, let us receive, let us receive a blessing. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks, everybody. It's been, uh, it's been great, and I hope to see you again uh, soon. Like I said, Wednesday night, uh, there will be service at 5.30. I'm not sure. I can't promise. Um, if it will be live or if it will be uh, uh, taped, but there will be something at 5.30, so please uh, please stop by. And then on, uh, but there won't be communion. And then next Sunday, there will be a, a service at 8 and a service at 9. So uh, that uh, 8 on Facebook Live, 9 o'clock in person. So uh, that is, that's great. And uh, uh, with that, we'll see you soon. Know, uh, know that you're being prayed for by the people here at Peace and know that God loves you. So do I. Take care. See you soon.